Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's another great day to discuss other people's excellence. I'm the Uncle Brett One, Brett Carroll, and I'm just a guy that loves BS Network. Round one is in the books. It's finally here. It's finally gone. It was as entertaining of a first round as we thought it was going to be. It was, we knew going into this draft that there was going to be a lot of question marks, a lot of uncertainty with where guys would go, what order guys would go, and stuff like that. And we got it. Nine trades in the first round, which I think was a record. Um, you know, a lot of Georgia Bulldogs went off the board. Uh, good for them. Some Georgia Bulldogs didn't go off the board, which was a little interesting. Uh, great first round. So I'm going to do the winners, losers, as well as three picks that I want to see in round two. All right. So let's do this. Starting off with my winners, both the Giants and the Jets. New York stand up, y'all. The fans of both of these teams should be extremely happy today. Extremely happy. The Giants getting both Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal at five and seven is insane. I remember when the I remember um when we did our toy drive for Christmas and uh my, my boy Bernard was doing a uh mock dra- mock draft as his own in the simulator had Evan Neal fall into five, and we all laughed. We said, yeah, that's never going to happen. And they got him at seven. You know what I mean? That, that's that's just how far we've come in this draft process um, that so many guys moved up and down the board. Uh, a guy like Evan Neal that was supposed to be the number one pick in the draft at one point, the Giants got him at seven. Kayvon Thibodeau, the other guy that was supposed to be the number one pick in the draft, the, the Giants got him at five. So if you're the Giants – you could not have had a better first round than what you had. You got you literally got the two guys that should have been the top, the top picks in the draft if the draft happened in January and not April. So, you know, for all you Giants fans, I'm Charles, I'm looking at you who complain and moan and cry about the draft process and it's so stupid how guys fall up and down the board uh, from the last time we played football till April. Well, you should not complain anymore because you have benefited from that. Two guys that would probably have been the number one and number two pick in the draft and back in January, you got at five and seven. That is insane. And then the Jets, getting Sauce Gardner, getting Garrett Wilson, arguably the best corner and the best receiver in the draft, and then being able to trade back up and getting Jermaine Johnson was was, was huge. Again, uh for those that have been watching my mock drafts, no matter what I do for the Jets at four and ten, some Jets fan was mad at me because some per- some people want offensive line, some people want edge rush, some people want saw, some people want receiver, some people want all this other stuff. They basically f- hit every note. Uh, if you're a Jets fan, you got sauce, you got Gary Wilson, you got your edge rusher. I mean, the only thing they could have done is somehow trade it back into the first round again and got an offensive tackle. But again, that wasn't going to happen. They still have moves to make. There's still offensive linemen available in this draft. They they will address the offensive line in day two, I'm pretty sure. So if you're the Giants and the Jets, you have to be ecstatic with what what happened with your teams this uh, so far. Um, probably if you're the Giants, you probably have the best draft of anybody. Because I'm uh, again, whenever you get two people, two guys that could have been the first pick in the draft, and you get them both, that's a win. That's a win, no matter how you slice it. So amazing, 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 amazing. Eagles trading up again. Jordan Davis, one of my favorite players in the draft, a guy I wanted the Steelers to be to hopefully get at 20, get him, they move up and get him, and they didn't have to give up their other first round pick to do it, which was essential because then they traded that pick to get AJ Brown. And for all the Eagles fans that that moan and groan about not being able to draft a receiver in the first round, don't got to worry about that. But worry about that. Now you got a proven commodity in AJ Brown. You got a star star player at the position to go along with Devontae Smith. If you're Jalen hurts, you would have to be excited and you have to be ready to work because this is the Eagles telling you, yo, man, we're giving you every position uh, to, to be great. We're giving you every opportunity to be great here. So if you are Jalen Hurts, you have to be excited. If you're A.J. Brown, you got to be excited. Congratulations on your new contract. 
for first and a third, that's not bad at all. That's 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 not bad at all. Um, and if you're the Eagles again, you're, you're excited. If you're an Eagles fan, you got to be excited about that. Um, and I think this is one of those. I think this is one of those trades that worked out for both teams. If you're Tennessee, you you had for a brief moment two first round picks. Um, and with that 18th pick, you were able to get Traylon Burks, who everybody compares to A.J. Brown. So you're able to get a cheaper version of A.J. Brown. Hopefully he will be just as productive. Hopefully he can be just as good. But a guy that you know how you're going to utilize him because he reminds you of the guy that you just got rid of. And so I thought that was a brilliant strategy by Tennessee. Like, hey, we got a guy here that reminds us of the guy that we're trying to keep. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, he doesn't want to come back. We can't keep him. We'll trade him and draft a guy that will literally be his replacement, literally be the guy that will fill his role on our football team. I'm okay with that. And then with their second round, uh, their second first round pick, they traded down. I forgot who they traded down with, but they traded down, were able to get even more picks. And again, a loaded day two draft. So you have an extra third round pick from the Eagles. And I don't know what the trade details were from trading down, but obviously they're getting at least a second round pick because they traded out of the first round uh, for a team to move up. Again, to me, that's smart. Day two is loaded. You got your first round pick in Traylon Burks, who was a guy that you would have been ecstatic fell to at 26. You were able to get him at 18. I think that's I think that was a good move for Tennessee. I know some Tennessee fans are probably upset that AJ is gone, but if you're gonna lose AJ, this is probably the best scenario for you to, you know, for getting his replacement. So I like that for them. And then the Saints, I thought what the Saints did was good. Training up to get Chris Olave, making sure they got that receiver that they liked, making sure they got a guy that can help uh Jameis Winston. In the passing game, they needed they needed somebody besides Michael Thomas. If Michael Thomas ever ever returns, another Ohio State guy. Um, I thought that was a brilliant move. And then getting Trevor Penning, uh, they need help in the offensive line. He's a guy that could come in, maybe starts at right tackle right now. Uh, he's kind of a developmental guy, but this is probably this is the guy that kind of wanted all along. They knew that the top three tackles were going to be gone by the time they picked. And they were able to still get the fourth, probably the fourth best tackle in the draft. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant uh, day for them as well. Jacksonville, I I really liked what they did. Uh, Two potential cornerstone pieces for their defense. Some people like the Trayvon Walker pick at one. Some people don't. I kind of like it. I understand the whole production thing, but his potential and upside is something crazy. And I am of the mindset, if you're going to go number one overall, get the guy that has the highest potential, right? It's it's one thing to take a guy in the first round. It's another thing to be the first overall pick. And so if they can bring him in, develop him, teach him the right way, you know, some pass rush moves and stuff like that, his athleticism is insane. And he can be an absolute star at the defensive end position if they if they utilize him the right way. I get them saying we're going to go with the upside as opposed to a guy with Aiden Hutchinson, who's more of a safer pick. I get it. I totally understand it. And um, I'm not going to knock them for that. And again, they, they were able to trade back into the first round and and get a guy to, to uh, uh, get Devin Lloyd, another pick that I really like, a guy, a guy that I was really high on myself. Um, so again, two guys that could be cornerstone pieces for the net for this next iteration of the Jacksonville defense. That's um, so you know, Jacksonville's always had a good defense. Um, and this is them putting their stamp on their defense again. I kind of I kind of like it. That's the winner. And the Bengals getting Daxton Hill at 31. That's just insane. This is a guy I wanted the Steelers to take at 20. Uh, he fell all the way to 31. I think that's a great move for them. Sometimes you just get lucky like that. And this is one of those things. That's a winner in my book. Loser. All right, Detroit. Uh, it's not that I don't think Jamison Williams is going to be good. 
to me, it made zero sense to trade away both both 32 and 34 to move all the way up for Jameson Williams when, by the way, he's still coming off that knee injury. He probably won't even be ready half the season this year. And this is a deep wide receiver draft class. Six guys went in the first round. I guarantee you six more will, at least six more will probably go by the end of tomorrow. There were guys you could have taken. Uh, again, Christian Watson wasn't drafted yet. So that's somebody you could have gotten at 32. Sky Moore was not drafted yet. Another guy you could have gotten at 32. A guy I really like in George Pickens uh, hasn't been drafted yet. A guy you can get at 32, probably even 34. So for you to trade up to get Jamison Williams, I understand some people think if healthy, he is the best receiver in this class. I get it. But to me, that was just way too rich of a trade up to get a wide receiver again in a draft class that is chock full of wide receivers. There's so much wide receiver talent in this class. To me, it didn't make sense to trade up and get a guy like that, especially since it's not like Detroit is a wide receiver away from being this great team. I thought what Detroit was going to do was try to collect as many assets as they could and just collect talent because they kind of need a little bit of everything. So it was weird to me that they trade up to get a guy, a hurt wide receiver at that. And to me, and that's another thing to me that put, that puts so much pressure on this young man to come back and be an absolute superstar. He can't just be a good receiver. Now, not only did you take him in the first round, you traded up and you traded so much to get him. This dude has to be an absolute superstar at the position now. And I just think that's a way too much uh, pressure on this dude. Um, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was a reach. Um, not, not to take him at 12, but to trade up and get him at 12. I thought that was just way too rich in my book to do. Um you know, it's funny, the, the Packers didn't take a wide receiver in the first round again, but Detroit, who's in their same division, they seem to love taking first-round wide receivers, and they usually don't strike, you know, besides Calvin Johnson, they usually don't really hit, hit it the nail on the head when they draft these guys early. So, again, I pray for everybody in this draft class. I don't I, – I, I hate people that root against kids that they don't even know. I want all these guys to be successful. So hopefully James, Jameson Williams is worth that, but that's a tall order, man. He's going to have to be a perennial all-star or pro bowler in order to justify trading up that much to get him. That's just me. Um, then the Steelers is kind of opposite. They, they took a quarterback, which if you know, I did not want them to take a quarterback. They didn't even trade down, which, again, if you know, if you've seen my mock drafts and every single one, if, if you're going to take a quarterback, please do me the favor of at least trading down first, getting some more picks, and then taking your guy. They didn't do that. Then on top of that, they didn't even take the guy. I thought they were going to take him, Malik Willis. They took Kenny Pickett. Again, I don't root against anybody especially Kenny Pickett, he's from Jersey. So you know I want him to play well. He went to Pitt. So you know he, I want him to play well. And he just got drafted by my team. So you know I want him to play well. Kevin Colbert, this is his last year. Thank God. He has been fantastic. He's been our GM since 2000. He has had a fantastic career as a GM. I will not deny that. But, and I'm going to do a whole pod on Kevin Colbert uh, because I think he deserves it. Again, 21 years as a GM, won two Super Bowls, went to a third. So obviously he kind of knows what the hell he's doing. But his last decade, roughly, of drafting has killed the Steelers. And it's moves like this that gets Steelers fans infuriated because this was just not a good move. Kenny Pickett was the only quarterback taken in this first round. So when the whole NFL world has realized, yo, man, these guys are not first round caliber quarterbacks. The Steelers just had to say, well, we're going to still take a guy anyway. 
And I hate teams that feel like they just have to take a guy for the sake of taking the guy. That's not how you draft. You don't draft based on, oh, I need a guy, so I'm just going to take a guy. You draft on best player available. You draft on the value of the pick. You draft on how they're going to help my team and impact my team. Kenny Pickett, you could have traded down and still got Kenny Pickett. Don't tell me you couldn't have traded down. The freaking Patriots traded down one pick behind you at 21. They were able to trade down. The, the Ravens traded down from 23. That's three picks behind you. They were able to trade down. So don't tell me that anybody that was looking to move up to 23 or 21 wouldn't have traded up to 20. You didn't want to trade down because you couldn't miss on your guy. But there was nobody that wanted your guy. He's the only quarterback that was taken in the first round. And even that, a lot of people were surprised because he doesn't have the upside that Malik Willis has. It doesn't make sense. I get it. They, um, they know this kid. He played for Pitt. They know all the coaches that coached him. They know all the guys that recruited him. They were very comfortable with Kenny Pickett. And, they be- and, and, and again, I believe if Kenny Pickett is going to reach his ceiling, Pittsburgh is one of the few teams that will help him reach his ceiling because of how comfortable they are with him. They know him. They, they, they know everything about this dude. So drafting Kenny Pickett wasn't really the issue. My issue is you could have traded down, got some more picks, and still taken Kenny Pickett. Honestly, Hand to God, I honestly think he would have been there in the second round if you really wanted him that bad. So, again, reaching for a quarterback is probably the worst things you can do, and I think that's what they did. Now, granted, I'm rooting for this kid. He's from Jersey. He went to Pittsburgh, and he got drafted by my team. So, in no way am I hoping this guy's going to be a bust. I hope that five years from now I get to say, Kevin Colbert, congratulations, you found your next Hall of Fame quarterback. But that's just me being optimistic. If you're telling me his ceiling is Kirk Cousins or Derek Carr, two guys that didn't, weren't even drafted in the first round, by the way, um, yeah, great. You might be one of the few teams that can help him even reach that ceiling. But is that ceiling good enough? Especially when you're in a division with a Joe Burrow and a Lamar Jackson and a Deshaun Watson, and you're in a conference with a Patrick Mahomes, and a Josh Allen. And yeah, you can make the case pocket passers and uh, Tom Brady, the Tom Brady's of the world are still doing well. Yes, you can. I'm not saying Kenny Pickett can't win, especially with our defense. But that's the point. I would have taken a defensive player in the first round. That's my thing. Let's let me finish creating and molding this brilliant young defense I have. That's what I would have wanted to do at 20, if you were going to stay at 20. If you were so gun ho about taking a quarterback, I would have traded down because he would have been there in the late 20s. I would have traded down, got some more day two picks, and then taken him. To take him at 20 is such a reach and is such a is such is such a misreading of the board, misreading of the room, really. You, you were the only one that valued this guy this high. Nobody else. The Saints traded up, didn't get a guy. The Lions traded up, didn't get, a, didn't get a guy. Saints had another pick in front of you, didn't take a, a quarterback. Carolina took somebody, took, took, took a, a tackle instead of a quarterback at six. And there were another team that should have traded down, but they probably, would, they probably weren't able to trade down at six, which makes sense. At 20, you could have traded down. And to me, it's little things like this that Kevin Colbert has done over the last 10 years that has really, really hurt this football team. And so I'm, 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 to say I'm, I'm disappointed and say I'm pissed off is an understatement. Again, I like Kenny Pickett. I hope I am wrong. And actually, again, I think he's going to be a really good NFL quarterback. Don't get me wrong. If he's Derek Carr, you know, cool. But I don't know if you're winning a Super Bowl with Derek Carr. That's just, I just don't. I just don't think you are. So, I could be wrong. Uh, 
Other loser, Arizona. I mean, what are y'all doing? Again, value, value, value. The, I think there's a theme here with all the losers. It's not that they got bad players. It's the value. You trade away the 23rd pick in the draft for Hollywood Brown. You're telling me that there's no receivers in this draft class that you like that you could have just drafted better than Hollywood Brown? You're telling me that Hollywood Brown, who has vastly underperformed as a Raven, was worth the 23rd pick in the draft? Uh, I'm sorry. That's just asinine to me. If you want to trade for Hollywood Brown, go ahead. Give give them a third-round pick. You don't give them a first-round pick for Hollywood Brown. It doesn't make sense. Especially when I believe there's like there's about five Hollywood Browns in this draft that you could have gotten. It's, that's, that's just, again, value. Granted, do I think Hollywood Brown is going to be better on the Cardinals and in their air raid system than he was on the Ravens who don't even throw the ball? Of course I do. But that's not, but you're not trading based on the value of what you think he can be on your team. You're trading on the value of what he is and what he has been. He has underperformed as a receiver in the NFL. He was not worth a first round pick. Period. Period. Just because the Ravens drafted him, I believe, in the first round, doesn't mean he was worth a first round pick in the trade. He was not. A.J. Brown was drafted in the second round because he has performed to his level. He was worth a first and a third. Devontae Adams was traded, was drafted in the second round because he's performed at the level that he was at. He was a first and a second. Hollywood Brown was drafted in the first round. I'm sorry. It would be hard pressed for me to, to trade anything more than a third round pick. And even that might be a stretch. I'm not trading the first round pick for Hollywood Brown. That is insane. That is insane. The I don't know what the Arizona Cardinals were thinking there, but that's a that is a terrible trade in my opinion. Houston. Um I actually like that they like that they went with Derek Stanley at three. I like that they said we're not gonna hear all the noise. We're not gonna again, this is a guy that from the beginning of the process was a top five bona fide pick. Nothing has changed between that and now and then for us to say that he's no longer a top five bona fide pick. We understand some of the things that have happened over the last two years. Some of those things aren't his fault. We believe this is still the best cornerback in the draft. That's not why I have him here. Kenyon Green at 13 scratches my head a little bit. A little bit, not a lot. Kenyon Green, again, a guy at 20 I would have liked. Kenyon Green uh, is a guy that, to me, if you're the Texans, you again knowing the draft, there's a there's so many interior linemen in this draft, and Houston needs a, a, a little bit of everything. I just don't under I just don't think the value at getting Kenyon Green. I said 13. I forgot they traded back to 15 to get him so maybe it's like okay well we we have some more picks that we could play with but to me that even that tells me even more you shouldn't have taken him at 15 again this is a draft class that is rich with interior linemen and i mean rich with interior linemen so taking k grant at 15 to me is a little bit of a reach especially when i think they could have went splashier that's just me that's just me. I, I think they could have went a little splashy there. So I have my, my losers. Carolina, hear me out. I like Akeem Aguanu. I really like Akeem Aguanu. Matter of fact, I know some Giants fans are a little upset because they wanted Akeem over Evan Neal. Okay. Um, again, they weren't able to trade back. Understandable. I'm glad they went tackle instead of quarterback. Understandable. The only, and I mean the only reason why I'm putting them here is because to me, a Kim is more of a versatile lineman. 
He can play a little bit of everything. A lot of people think he, a lot of people think he, you could even should put him at guard. I would have liked them to take Neil or even Cross only because this is a team that has struggled for d- literally over a decade now to find a suitable left tackle. And where Kim's upside is a little bit higher than some of those other guys, a lot of his upside is more in his versatility and athleticism. Whereas Neil and Cross were more bona fide left tackles. And my thing is, if you're a team that's been so desperate to try to get a left tackle and so desperate to try to find a glue guy that you could just stick there for 10 years and not worry about it, I would have taken one of those two guys over at him in this situation. This is a situational pick. Now, granted, if Neil would have went five to the Giants, okay, you know what I mean? If, and if, if, if you're trying to tell me that the Panthers like a Kim over Cross and it would have made more sense because he's at NC State, they probably saw more tape of him. Okay, I'll take that. I, you know what I mean? I, I'm okay with that. But when, when you had all three guys sitting there, again, situationally, the Panthers specifically, I think they had to go Evan Neal there or Charles Cross. Because those are two guys that are way more, these are for sure left tackles, guys that you could plug and play right now at the left tackle position, and we should be good. Kim McGuire probably has the best upside of all three of them, so I get it. But again, this is a team that desperately needs their guy at left tackle. If he plugs in right away and he's a great left tackle, then they're a winner. You know what I mean? This I should put them here with an asterisk, right? I should put them here with an asterisk. To me, I just I just was a little bit of a head scratcher that they took a Kim over Neil or even Cross, um, because those guys are projected more as bona fide left tackles, which is what they need. So now here's some picks I want to see day two. I'm not predicting them. I'm not mocking them. I'm saying these are two. These are three picks I really want to see if you're the Packers you have not picked a wide receiver Aaron Rodgers of course is already stirring the pot apparently he already said he just came out with a quote that said oh I thought Devontae Adams was coming back when I resigned here so now he's already starting shit if you're the Packers to me you cannot even though I keep saying there's so much day two and even some day three talent at the wide receiver position. To me, you need to go up and get a guy. To me, George Pickens, wait a little bit. If he falls out of the top five, maybe even the top 10 picks in the second round, you have two first rounders, I mean, two second rounders, trade up and get him. Trade up and get George Pickens. You need a bona fide stud at the wide receiver position. George Pickens is one of my favorite guys. Like Jameis, he, he's weird because like Jameson Williams, before the before the season, he was supposed to be a bona fide number one, you know, first first round uh player. He got hurt, and now he definitely fell to the second round just because we haven't really seen him all year. But I love his game. I love his highlights. I, I love his upside. If you're the Packers, this is the guy you want. He might still fall pretty far in the second round which means monitor him closely, have a, have a check mark, a benchmark set and say, if he falls past this pick or whatever, we're going to go get our guy. They have to do it. They have to do it. Um, for them to not take a guy at 28, I thought was silly. There were guys at 28 they, they could have taken. Um, we know they don't like their first round receivers. I thought they were going to do it. I get that six guys went before pick 20. So I get where they wanted to sit back and just let stuff happen. But be aggressive here. Trade up and get George Pickens in the second round. Steelers, you got to get a corner. Get a corner or a safety. That's what you should have done at 20. You refuse to do it, so you better do it now in round two. It's just that simple. Again, mold that defense. That defense is what's, is what's going to win you games. You need to make sure that defense is elite. 
So go ahead and do that in, in round two, please and thank you. Patriots, same thing. Trade up, getting the Kobe Dean. The Kobe Dean is uh, he is every you know he's a patriot. He's just a patriot. Everything about him screams patriot. The uh, Patriots were able to trade down. They took the guard from Chattanooga, which I thought was a bit of a reach. You know, Bill Belichick, sometimes he looks like an evil genius. Sometimes just like maybe you're too smart for your own good. Sometimes this is one of those moves. I could have put him in the losers category, but them trading down is never a bad thing. Go get Kobe Dean. If you got to trade up to get him, go trade him to get him. But go get Kobe Dean. I think I think he's a guy that should be a Patriot. I thought they should have taken him at 29 myself. <laughs> It is what it is. The guy from Chattanooga might have been there in the second round. So I think that was a reach. Uh, make up for your mistake and trade up and get the Kobe Dean. All right? But that's it, guys. Those are my winners and losers for round one. I'm really excited about round two and three, which will happen tomorrow. Uh, well, tonight as, as, you're reading, as you're watching this. Uh, tonight at 7. Let me know what you guys think. I'm the Unforbrettable Boy himself. You can catch me at Never For Bright Me. That's N E V A underscore the number four B R E T T underscore M E on Instagram and Twitter. We are at the underscore dope blog on Instagram, the dope blog, all one word on Twitter. Our website is the dope.blog. And because you're watching this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. We really, really appreciate it. And join us next time as we continue to discuss other people's excellence. Peace.